Hello everybody, and I just saw a girl in the spider's web, and I liked it. Now this movie is kind of different than what I expected. I've only seen the American version with Rini Mara, and I, and I, I love that. It's, a, it's kind of a tighter movie. Um, it's more grittier, it's darker. However, people are kind of comparing this film to the equivalent of a mix between Jason Bourne, A Good Day to Die Hard, and Skyfall. I actually don't see it as any other way as being just a good movie. It's still dark. I don't know about, like, gritty. It's not raw. Uh, I want to see the Swedish films, but I just haven't got the chance. I haven't read the novels. Uh, but I really want to. But I believe that this movie is still pretty... It, I don't think it's tame. I mean, it's a little bit light. Uh, um, but it's not the action-centric movie that everyone's, like, raving it up to me. It kind of has a little teetering on the, you know, rotten and uh, kind of fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, like Jason Borden, coincidentally. I don't believe that to be the case at all. I find this to be a very fascinating movie. The, the one critique I will say is that it is very short. Um, I, so I went to the Wednesday night, opening night, of, uh, I guess the premiere of the film, and it was like a girls' night out thing uh, with AMC. Which I don't really understand. It's like saying, ironically, I'm going to the guys I know to Titanic, but whatever. But, um, I got this le uh, leathery wallet, which doesn't even fit in my pocket. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Um, oh, and side note, I also got the Hate You Give poster. Oh, this is a, ooh, this is an amazing movie. But, anywho, besides the point, um... No, I really like this movie. I was kind of... Okay, I wasn't expecting it to be like the disaster known as a snowman. Nowhere is it near... No, no, no. No one's... I'm glad that no one's even, like, comparing it to that. However, this movie is just good. It's sticking to the original material while being a new original piece. It's a little hard to balance, and I feel like that this movie, while it's kind of... Short? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what short that this means, but I feel like that it kind of follows a little traditional path, while the other movie was longer and it felt faster paced. Um, okay, let's just go in the film. So, the biggest offense I will give the film is that the music, the score is kind of atrocious. It's not okay. It's not like it's like awful. However, it doesn't stick. To the film at all and I think that it kind of is a drawback given that you're giving the same type of sequences but you're not implementing any sort of like exciting elements and the, uh, this movie is supposed to be more exciting um in that sense there's a theme like there's like a, there's like a theme song like the original uh, David Fincher film did and it just sticks to Kind of a little royalty-free music. I don't think that plays well at all. With the imagery that they're intending to have. It's fine for having the conclusion. Wrapping up the film with like piano and violin. However, the whole film throughout like that. I don't think it matches and fits. Um, whatsoever. I also think that Claire Foy is excellent. However... She's giving a very quiet performance, and the film overall is about her and her connection to her sister. I'll get to that. But the movie moves at such a quick pace, and I don't think they cut anything. I don't think there's any production problems. I think it's a little bit of the writing. There's a couple writers. There's like three, and I, I want to say there's some debate going on between what tone they want to have. There's moments where she's like taking a beat and she is being quiet like she gets the overall MacGuffin of Freefall. I, I believe that's a project that they're intending for the uh, it's like a weapon um, and she's looking at it and before she clicks it she like has a moment to herself but we don't really get to follow her mentality because the movie wants to keep on pushing like pushing to the set pieces and there's not many set pieces except there's more than what the promotion advertised, I feel like. Um, 
Yeah, but other than that, I felt I felt like I was moving with the film. But there are certain certain points where I wanted to like stop and be like, no, 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 wait, like I want to like enjoy this moment. Um, but it just wasn't. It just didn't really let me. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing because I did enjoy it. There's a little bit, a little bit of a Batman v Superman um, material going on where we kind of stick with what we need to know, and it's like, no, yes, we know Batman, we know Superman, but this is not, you know, there. This is not the Batman or Superman that we know. It's supposed to create a more idealistic character. And you can't just say, oh yeah, we know Batman, Martha, you know, Thomas Wayne. Well, yeah, but it's not what this movie is about. Same thing with her. Yeah, we know Elizabeth, we know Mikhail, yes, but your context that you're giving us isn't really letting us, you know, connect with them. Like, Mikhail, apparently, after all the events, he wrote the... He wrote articles, because he's a journalist, about the dragon tattoo and everything, and the heart it's nest, and it was kind of like... Breaking their friendship up until the point when they meet at end of Act 1. And they look at each other through the elevator. And I like it. He has the best moments. Actually, he has the best scenes. Like, I really felt it. I just wanted to feel more. Because it didn't really scratch underneath the surface as much as it should. Um, there's another uh, scene. Uh, for example. He's calling her. And he's saying... Uh, he's he's uh, talking to Elizabeth and he's saying, is there anything I can do? I want to help. And he's kind of ignoring his wife. And she wants his attention. She likes him. And she's, he's basically the only friend she has. But then she hacks. She uses her skills, her character motivation. She hacks his computer and, she's, and sees that his wife is there. And his wife closes it. And she blocks him as well. He's like, no. You, I don't want to interrupt your night. And it's like, oh, I felt that moment. However, this movie isn't really about that, but I think it kind of should be. Okay, but her and her sister, it's the driving force of the film. And I feel like it's a little bit of a shame to have her in less screen time than the Winter Soldier did in his own movie. She's in it, like, maybe 10 minutes of screen time. She looks at Elizabeth, um, you kind of setting it up. Well, okay, the cold open, actually. It's really interesting having Elizabeth leave because the sister chose the dad. Um, uh, the... the it's intending the dad for him to be, like, really gruesome and really nasty. However, they don't show anything. The only nudity we get is a, a naked woman with, like, tattoos leaving his room while the children are walking through his... But that's the only, like, oh. That's, like, the only, like, gross and disgusting thing that we see. But anyway, she she jumps and leaves. And uh, then we get the theme. And we grow. And, uh, we see her grow uh, as the Salander we know her today. Or that we're going to see. But um, her and her sister, like, they see each other through the uh, bridge set piece. And we know that something's coming. Because um, Elizabeth is looking at... Uh, her youth and like imagery and like looking at kids and there's a, another kid that's kind of connected like a Sicario 2 effect where it's going to continue uh, throughout and tracking the film with the main character but um the conclusion I'm kind of jumping ahead um but the conclusion is another set piece however I felt connected because I liked what they did with the sister jumping I mean the that piece of dialogue alone, when you finally get to, you know, wrap up everything that's going on in a timely matter. And I don't really like the fact that she has a team, but I didn't mind the team members. Um, you have the lead actor from Sorry to Bother You, which was a very different but very interesting movie. And uh, another hacker guy who we don't really get much exploration in the past film. So it's kind of more interesting to see her connections and organization. But I just wanted to be more involved with Elizabeth and Mikael. And he was extremely uninteresting. Um, yeah, I just wanted more. More bloodiness. More like, you know, a raw feeling you get when you want to just like get away from the movie. But you can't because it's so mesmerizing. Like, that's what David Fincher did magnificently. You wanted to look away because it's just so horrific. But you just couldn't because of the visuals. Because it technically was brilliant. And it was just, 
you know, the story was compelling. However, this time, it's not an action movie. I'll, I'll, I'll restate that, not an action movie. It's a very thriller-ish, not even spy, not espionage. It's just interesting and i like i like this stuff i like this kind of stuff more than tinker taylor soldier spy that was a complete bore in my opinion and this was enjoyable while having action moments like we didn't really get to see elizabeth fight in the other ones i mean we kind of did but the only really big action set piece we got from the previous film was a car chase that with her using her skills moved out of the way and the villain you know ran over the bridge and um he blew up but here we have hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the biggest negative with that, there's a one set piece in the bathroom that was kind of hard to follow, but I still enjoyed it because it wasn't messy editing, it wasn't messing continuity, it, it, they had good use of location, it looked beautiful. I mean, it of course, if it wouldn't look beautiful, I would be saying that's a big negative, that that's kind of uh, drawing me to another... Uh, like set back like whoa wow why does it look so bad but it doesn't and I mean snowman looked good too but come on this had everything in it but I wanted more like there's a great moment with her and the kid and um the boy he's choosing which car she needs to hijack and he's looking and he I think it's a Lambo or a Ferrari and I think it's a Lambo and and she picks it like it, it's good stuff like that that the audience can get into however it's kind of by the books, like, oh, here's the airport scene where they're having uh, an escape scene. And then here is a good uh, house set piece. Um, but I think it wrapped everything up nicely. Like Mikael at the end, he got rid of the article. Um, Elizabeth blew up the house. Like, I, I found it to be just good, but there's was a couple of MacGuffins that was too traditional. A little bit of the, you know, agent stuff that I wasn't that into. But um, overall, I don't think that it's one of the best movies of the year. Not even Amber mentioned, but I enjoyed it. And I'll see it again. Um, and I will accept it as a gift. I'll even give it a high accept as a gift because I liked it. I would say recommend. I, I definitely would recommend it. I will say go check it out. Um, if you have time, of course, too, because there's other movies coming out. But movies like Hate You Give or Overlord, I think, are... A little bit superior, but that doesn't make this a bad movie at all. It kind of compares to like the Miseducation or the Tully uh, era of film this in 2018, I believe. But definitely more positives than negatives, but yeah, overall, uh, B plus, eight out of ten, high except as a gift. So thanks for watching. Tune in to another uh, detail looks where we might discuss future upcoming November releases.